Is it true that bigger speakers have a larger soundstage, bigger imaging? Do they sound larger or is that just a sided bias thing? I was asked this question recently by a patron who saw somebody else's review of another speaker and he was just like, hey, Aaron, what do you think about this statement that bigger speakers have bigger images? And then I was reminded of a video I watched last week of another YouTube reviewer. Seems like a really cool guy. I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want it to sound like I'm starting any drama. But he was talking about some speakers that he owns. And these are very large speakers. And he says one of his favorite things about those speakers is that they sound big. So first of all, let's let's take the speaker out of the equation. What drives, assuming everything else is the same, what drives soundstage, imaging precision, things like that is the source music. If you have music that is played in mono and it's not panned left or right, it doesn't have any kind of effects going on, it's probably going to sound dead center mono and it's only going to be about as wide as whatever the music or the content is itself. Now, other tracks will have different phase things going on inside of it. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the term Q sound, and it is a method to manipulate the phase of different sounds. And that way it makes it sound like things are occurring outside of the soundstage. If things are perfectly in phase, then it's going to be within the soundstage, within the speakers. But if it's a little bit tweaked, maybe not even 180 degrees out of phase, talking maybe 45 degrees, just a little bit, can throw images outside of the soundstage. And in particular, the, I believe it's Q sound, there's a Madonna, was it her Immaculate Collection that was redone in Q sound? I'd have to double check, but I believe that's what it was. And when I listen to tracks off of that particular album, it's like the images are just super broad. And sometimes I have forgotten about that Apple playlist will be playing some of those tracks and I'll be like, gosh, what, what's going on with my, my speakers? It's, the soundstage is ridiculous. And then I remember, and I'm like, okay. So I want to bucket that. Uh, just remember a lot of this information really is contingent upon the source music that you're listening to. Now, before I try to answer this question using some science, I need to first address the probably the easiest thing that you're thinking, that I'm thinking, that I forgot to mention earlier and why I'm having to edit this back in before I publish it again, is that when you look at a small speaker, you don't expect much out of it. If it has low frequency output capability that's more than you expected, then that speaker might sound big to you. So when you go into a session to listen to a pair of speakers that has multiple woofers, you're probably already expecting that that speaker will sound large. Truth be told, sometimes that's the case. Sometimes the frequency response of that speaker will get lower than its bookshelf counterpart. But I will tell you guys, the majority of the time, a tower speaker, unless you're spending pretty good money, is not really going to get much lower than a bookshelf speaker. Let's say the bookshelf speaker plays down to 50 hertz or so. Well, that tower speaker probably is going to go only going to play down to 50 hertz as well. But the main difference there is that that bookshelf speaker may have a sensitivity of 85 decibels, where that tower speaker might have 88 or maybe 90 decibel sensitivity. So it doesn't play lower. It can just get a little bit louder, a little bit more easily without distortion. And maybe that's why it sounds like it plays like a bigger speaker. Getting back to the original question of do bigger speakers have bigger presentations, bigger sound stages, bigger images. Consider this. The ideal speaker, I think most people would agree with this. The ideal speaker is going to replicate a point source as best it can. And what do I mean when I say point source? Well, it would be a sound source that is uniform for every sound that comes out of that speaker. This is why coaxial speakers from Kef and Genelec, maybe even Tenoy and other brands are really highly regarded, assuming that they're designed well, because they do a good job of creating a point source. If you have a tweeter in a mid-range and you have them co-located, well then if it's done well, then everything sounds like it's coming from that one source, the tweeter and the mid-range stacked right on top of each other. Given the limitations of some coaxial designs, 
some designers will put a separate tweeter above a mid-range. And, and the reasons for that are plentiful. Some people just don't know how to design a good coaxial. And I'm talking about the actual drive unit itself. And then some people don't want to bother with it because it's a lot of work. When you separate that tweeter from that mid-range, as long as they're like really close together, you can imitate a good point source as long as the crossover point is low enough. The further you separate this tweeter from this mid-range, the more that crossover point really, really matters and the harder it is to get those two drive units to act like they're the same point source speaker. And so if you got out to some crazy high distance where the crossover just couldn't make up for the gap and the wavelength between the two, and it couldn't make them sound like they're a point source anymore, then you've got issues with phase, you've got smearing, you've got other things going on, not just in frequency, but time and phase. And those are two separate things, but those contribute to having what some might call a larger soundstage. And here's, here's a simple trick for you. Take your existing speakers right now. If you're listening to me on desktop speakers or loudspeakers in your living room, walk up to those speakers, take the binding post, take this plug out of one speaker, flip it around, reverse the polarity, sit back down and listen. Now, what you're probably going to hear, what you should hear, assuming that your speakers were corrected or correctly connected the first time, is my voice should sound very diffuse. The image should sound like a little bit larger. My voice should spread out more. Now, that's not good because my voice right now is being recorded in mono. You should hear me as mono and I should be right here dead in the center. And that's the issue with crossover designs. So when you create a bad speaker, you have a poor crossover design, you get more spread, you get out of phase cancellations, you get more diffuse sound from that one speaker. I'm not even talking about from a pair of speakers. I'm going back to talking about just one speaker with the crossover that maybe isn't quite designed too well. And when that happens, the precision of the images in the soundstage, they're a little bit more lost. The size of the soundstage will tend to grow and will tend to drift and wander and things maybe aren't quite as clearly defined. And I consider that a con. The purpose of the crossover is to integrate different drivers together. So it sounds like the speaker is one point source. Well, the secondary purpose, at least, or maybe the main purpose. The other purpose is to simply protect the tweeter so it doesn't fry. But the goal with the speaker design is to make it sound like it's one single point source and everything is coming from that location. Now, that's somewhat easy to do with a standard bookshelf speaker. And I think this is really why people feel like tower speakers are larger in soundstage because when you add more drive units, so you went from a woofer and a tweeter, now you've got a woofer, you've got a mid-range, and you've got a tweeter. Well, now there's more complexity in that crossover. But let's take it a step beyond that. Let's say that you've got multiple woofers and you've got just one tweeter. Let's say you're running what they call a two and a half wave. That's where you have two woofers and you have a tweeter. And those two woofers overlap, but the top woofer maybe extends a little bit higher to mate with that tweeter. There's a reason that you don't have that bottom woofer crossed over as high as the top woofer. I'm not going to get into that here, but basically that's just to keep the phase alignment for that speaker. So it sounds like it's one point source. The problem is that the more woofers you add, obviously the taller speaker you get. So now we're talking about tall speakers, but the more complexity in the crossover, the more opportunity there is for non-ideal implementation. And when you have non-ideal implementation, what you can often have, and I've heard it many times, is a split in the soundstage. So my voice may sound like it's coming up from the tweeter at the higher frequencies, but it may sound like it's coming from one of the woofers below it at the lower frequencies. And that's what we call a split soundstage height. Sounds like it's coming from up here and down here. It's not coming from in the middle at that reference point where the reference axis, where you were supposed to be listening to that speaker at, right between the tweeter and the mid or right at the tweeter, okay? There's a discontinuity there. There's an issue with that sound profile and the wave fronts aren't hitting you like they're supposed to be. Maybe things are a little bit out in time. Maybe they're out of phase and the frequency response is taking a hit. And so you have a vertical spread in your images. You went from pinpoint imaging with that two-way speaker with an ideal crossover to maybe more diffuse imaging 
with a multi woofered tower speaker that doesn't have ideal crossover, but it does get louder. Okay, it gets a little bit louder, but it's giving something up. And that's usually what you'll find, especially when you're talking about budget oriented tower speakers. And for example, my experience, if you're talking about $500 or less for a tower speaker with multiple woofers, then you're definitely going to give up something at a crossover because crossover components cost money. And when you don't have a good crossover, you get less precise imaging and things tend to wander within the soundstage. Now, not only do things wander in the soundstage, but the issue is frequency dependent. So it's not like you have consistent sound that maybe is diffuse. You might have sound that is more localizable for higher frequency, more diffuse in the mid range. So now your problem is many. Now you're like, okay, well, I can clearly hear the lower vo voice, voice. I can clearly hear the lower vocal region, but something is happening in this upper mid range and then the cymbals, hi hats, I don't know, tongs. Do people play tongs? That'd be funny. Those things might sound more defined, but something again is going wrong at that mid range. Let's also consider baffle size. Now, pay attention because this one's important. Baffle size is the thing that you put the speaker on, the baffle. The front of the speaker is the baffle. Larger baffles typically have larger speakers, which means that those larger speakers with the larger baffles are going to narrow in radiation lower in frequency than smaller baffle speakers with smaller drive units. And this is physics. It's not something that I'm just making up off the top of my head. It's really a simple calculation. Speed of sound, which is about 13,500 inches per second, give or take. Divide that by a quarter wave or a half wave, depending on how you want to do your math. Quarter wave is the more absolute answer. Half wave for most loudspeakers is reasonable. And then divide that by the size of the drive unit, the effective diameter from the surround to the surround. So typically what you're going to find is that a six and a half inch midwoofer is going to beam somewhere around like 1500 hertz, just give or take at a half wave. A 15 inch woofer is going to beam somewhere around 500 hertz. I'm not going to do the math right now, but it's somewhere in that ballpark for a half wave. So what happens above those beaming points is the sound is very broad. And then above 500 hertz for a 15 inch woofer, it starts to narrow up. Above about 1500 hertz or so for a six and a half inch midwoofer, it starts to narrow up. That means that that six and a half inch woofer is broader from 500 hertz to about 1500 hertz than that 15 inch midwoofer or bass driver, if you want to call it that. That therefore means that there is less sound being reflected out into the room and there's more of a razor-like focused image with a larger speaker. So whoosh, right back to the front of this thing, larger speakers in terms of width, baffle width, will generally have tighter imaging and focus than a smaller baffled speaker. And that's just based purely on physics. So there's two things going on here. One is if you talk about a bigger speaker, is it the taller speaker or the, maybe it's just a wider speaker with like a 15 inch midwoofer with a horn driver at the above it. They're gonna behave a little bit differently. So the one with the larger drivers gonna narrow up, it's gonna sound a little bit more tight. The one that has smaller drivers but is taller is probably gonna have more radiation width horizontally but have issues in the crossover as it hands off from mid-woofer to mid-range to tweeter. And that's gonna cause you a lot of different things. And ultimately what I've wound up learning from my years of doing this is that taller speakers don't necessarily have bigger imaging. And if they do, most likely it's due to a few things. One could be, where are you seated? Are you at the right position? And is that crossover ideal for where you're sitting? but also is that crossover ideal, period. I mean, have they taken the time to make sure that all of those drive units sound like they're emanating from a single point source? And then if you combine that with a broader radiation, because maybe it's a slim tower speaker, then it's gonna have wider radiation. That wider radiation is gonna hit those walls. I don't know, what is this jazz hands? And the image could sound more diffuse. Ultimately, when you listen to a tower speaker, a slim tower speaker, and you feel like the image is bigger, the soundstage is larger, consider one of maybe a few things. Yeah, it's true. The bass can fill up the room. There are more reverberation going on in the room. 
that can definitely have an impact in the lower male vocal, female vocal region. So let's say 300 hertz and below for sure. The other thing to consider is that are you where you're supposed to be? If the speaker was designed to be listened to at the tweeter level, are you at the tweeter level? Are you above it or below it? See, with tower speakers, you don't really have the luxury of aligning that reference axis, that tweeter axis, or wherever it may be, to your ear. With bookshelf speakers, you know, normally you can adjust the bookshelf stand up to where it needs to be. But with tower speakers, if the tweeter is below your ear, when you sit down, that's where it's at, unless you go put it on blocks. If it's above your ear, when you sit down, that's where it's at, unless you take a chainsaw to it and chop it off. When those things happen, that can create a more diffuse soundstage. It makes things smear a little bit, but it also gives it that effect of ambiguity, which may make you think that the soundstage is larger than it really is. And then finally, the crossover implementation, which I've already discussed quite well at this point. So this is what I have to say. Yeah, maybe it's possible that taller speakers sound larger, but more than likely, if it does, it's because it's not doing something quite right. You're probably going to run into it more often than not with cheaper tower speakers than you will more expensive ones, assuming that you're comparing the build quality and the crossover components, right? So if I give you a thousand dollar budget and I say, build me the best thing you can versus a $500 budget and say, build me the best thing that you can, I'm willing to bet the $1,000 budget speaker is going to sound more cohesive and more like one point source right here, as opposed to the $500 one where it might sound up here a little bit and down here, it's going to be more diffuse, may sound larger, but it's not quite as accurate as I would want it to be because I want my music to dictate how large that sound is going to be. I wanted to try to emulate as good a point source as it possibly can. Now, if we want to talk about horizontal radiation, same thing applies. You can do a crossover design that's very well done for one speaker that's narrow versus another speaker that's broad. And then it's just a choice of which one do you like. But I don't want people to think that just because a speaker is a tower speaker and it's physically taller, that it's gonna have a larger soundstage and that that is a pro. More than likely, if it has a larger soundstage or larger images, it's probably a, a con and it's probably because something is given up in a trade-off somewhere. And I've normally experienced that you're giving up precision for SPL with additional drive units. So there you go. That's my take on do larger speakers sound larger and should they? Let me know what you think. Give me your experience in the comment section below and I will talk to you all later. Take care. Peace.